Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you are watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. I'm continuing now my series on the symbols of the Holy Spirit. And right now, I want to talk to you about the oil of heaven, which represents the Holy Spirit's power, that which sets you apart from the rest of the world. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship. And then we're getting right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. Anointing Fall on me Anointing Fall on me Let the power of the Holy Ghost Fall on me Anointing Fall on me Fall on me, anointing, fall on me, let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me, anointing, fall on me, anointing. I want to talk to you about the oil which represents the presence of the Holy Spirit. When I first began to serve the Lord, there were many people who made heavy impact on my life. I would go and seek out various mentors who would teach me different aspects of the nature of the Holy Spirit. But one person I am especially thankful for is my Aunt Esther. My Aunt Esther, every Tuesday night, would drive down to my house. I didn't drive then. I was about 15 years old. She would drive down to my house, pick me up in her little red car, and she would take me to her prayer class that she taught every Tuesday night. Now, this is one of the first times I had seen the oil emphasized in prayer. And I recall going to this service, and there was one of the members there who had created uh, his own bottles of oil that he would pass out for the prayer group to pray with. And I still remember the smell of the oil that I was given. It had a very distinct smell to it. It was very sweet. Uh, there was a beautiful fragrance to it. And I remember that fragrance to this day. And every time I smell something similar, I'm taken back to those moments 
when I first was being taught to pray. They taught me spiritual warfare. They taught me how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. They taught me intercessory prayer. They taught me many different spiritual dynamics, and I'm so thankful for those memories, and I'm so thankful for those experiences that helped to shape me at a very young age. But I'll never forget when they taught me the power of praying with oil. Now, oil is a symbol, and I'm going to talk to you about what it symbolizes in just a moment. But oil, though it's symbolic, is powerful because it's a connection point where we demonstrate our faith. Now, there's nothing necessarily powerful about the oil in and of itself, but it's the faith that goes forth when we pray with that oil that activates a certain power. And I remember when they laid hands on me, they prayed that God would raise me, they prayed that God would protect me, that God would give me favor, that God would launch the ministry to different levels. And I remember they all gathered around and they all smeared their hands with oil. And then they began to lay hands on me. And as they began to lay hands on me, they started praying in tongues. I'm telling you, there are very few experiences that I've had that can match what I experienced in those prayer meetings. Just sincere prayer warriors, people of God, people who loved to pray, all laying hands on me and just praying in the Holy Ghost. And they would take turns prophesying. And I remember sensing this heavy weight come on me. It was a very weighty glory that was manifested in the room as they began to pray. Now, it stuck in my mind, the fact that they used oil. Again, it was the first time I had ever seen it emphasized. I had seen people use oil on many different occasions for prayer, but this was the first time where they taught on it and they, they had it on hand. I remember all the ladies there had little bottles of oil in their purse that they would pull out ready to pray at any moment. And so I began to look into the scripture after these experiences, and I began to ask the Lord to reveal to me the meaning of this oil. And oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. It represents the essence of God being smeared on our lives. It represents the nature of God being rubbed into us that we might be empowered by the Holy Spirit. So the scripture says in Acts chapter 19, verse 12, and this is a an example of what oil is kind of like. Acts chapter 19, verse 12, the Bible says, when handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched his skin were placed on sick people, they were healed of their diseases and evil spirits were expelled. So there we see a tangible touch of the power of the Holy Spirit. The anointing is tangible. In fact, I've taught on this before, the tangible anointing. But here we see an example of what it's like to use oil in a New Testament setting. So why does oil carry such power? Well, as I said, it is symbolic for the nature of the Holy Spirit. There's faith released when we pray with oil. But deeper than that, we see the truths revealed to us about the Holy Spirit's nature. Now, I'll show you here. So in the Old Testament, there was a ceremony where men would anoint others with oil. They would anoint, prophets would anoint men who were empowered to certain positions with oil. They were given position. They were marked. They were set apart. When that oil touched them, it was a ceremony. It was symbolic for that person having been set apart for the purposes of God. So in the Old Testament, you'll see that kings were anointed. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 and 13, the Bible says this, Now the Lord said to Samuel, You have mourned long enough for Saul. I have rejected him as king of Israel. So fill your flask with olive oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse who lives there, for I have selected one of his sons to be my king. So as David stood there among his brothers, Samuel took the flask of oil he had brought and anointed David with the oil. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. Then Samuel returned to Ramah. So at this point, David was still, or he was already, I should say, marked as a man after God's own heart. He was already selected by God, but it wasn't until that oil touched his life that power came upon him, that the Holy Spirit came on him in a different way. Prophets were anointed in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 16. The Bible says, Then anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, to be king of Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from the town of Abel-Meholah, to replace you as my prophet. So kings were anointed, prophets were anointed, 
priests were anointed. Exodus chapter 28, verse 41 says, Clothe your brother Aaron and his sons with these garments, and then anoint and ordain them, consecrate them, so they can serve as my priests. Special holy items and places, such as altars, were anointed. Exodus chapter 29, verse 36 says this, Each day you must sacrifice a young bull as a sin offering to purify them making them right with the Lord. Afterward, cleanse the altar by purifying it, make it holy by anointing it with oil. So here we see some of the symbolism and the spiritual realities are very obvious in these portions of Scripture. Kings have authority. That anointing positions you with authority. Prophets can hear God. Prophets are set apart as servants of the Lord, and so are we. Priests were the ones who tended to worship. They were anointed to worship. They were anointed to offer sacrifice. So we've been anointed with authority. We've been anointed with that connection with God. We've been anointed to worship. And then the scripture talks about the special items being anointed, set apart for certain purposes, and being made holy with that anointing. That anointing doesn't just position you, it protects and purifies you. I want to say that again. I want you to hear me. That anointing doesn't just position you. It protects and purifies you. Now, we see the shadows, this Old Testament reality, this ceremony, this setting apart of powerful people of God. We see that shadow gain substance in the New Testament, specifically in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, where the Bible says, and you know, that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Now, hold on just a second. How did they anoint people in the Old Testament? How did they position them? How did they purify them? How did they bring about that protection? How did they bring about that authority? How were they set apart? They were anointed with oil. And here we see that symbol of the Holy Spirit's nature being revealed, not the shadow, but the substance. And you know, that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, not with oil, as a note. You know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. It was then that Jesus went about doing good. It was then that he was empowered to drive out demons and to drive out sickness. It was the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was anointed not with oil, but with the Spirit. Likewise, you and I are not necessarily anointed with oil, though that is the ceremony, though that is the symbolism. The substance is the Spirit. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. For He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free. So the anointing doesn't just position you and protect you and purify you and empower you. The anointing also gives you the ability to preach the good news, to proclaim liberty to those who are bound, to break open the cells and to smash the locks of those who are imprisoned spiritually, to break addiction, to break bondage. That is the essence of the Holy Spirit in you. That is the smearing of His power that has come upon you. We have been marked not with oil, but with the Holy Spirit. You and I today are not anointed necessarily. As I said, I understand the symbolism and the ceremony, and that's perfectly biblical. But you and I have something much deeper than the symbolism. We have the substance of the Spirit. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. It is the power of the Holy Spirit, that essence of His nature upon us, that separates us from the world. The power of the Holy Spirit, that person, His presence, gives us that power, gives us that protection purifies us, causes us to preach, causes us to proclaim, causes us to walk in a separation from the world, calls us out from among them, positions us in places of authority, sets us on a trajectory of God's destiny for us. The anointing sets you apart. The anointing 
makes you unique. That essence of the Spirit. You know, we who are Spirit-filled, we're not necessarily always embraced in all aspects of society. You and I are different. We're unique. We don't fit everywhere. That's because we're not of this world. We've been marked with the oil of heaven. We are dripping with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that marking, that separation, is what happens when the Holy Spirit's power comes upon you. Now, I want to show you real briefly, and then I want to pray for you. I want to show you what His presence brings. We saw in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, that His presence brings power. Psalm 45, 7, watch this. You love justice and hate evil. Therefore, God, your God, has what? Anointed you, pouring out the oil of joy on you more than anyone else. His presence brings joy. That essence of the Holy Spirit. Remember, the oil, the shadow, the spirit, the substance. That oil, that smearing upon you, not only brings power, it brings joy. And that joy is magnetism that draws people to the Jesus in you. His presence also brings favor and honor. Psalm chapter 84, verse 9 says, O God, look with favor upon the king, our shield. Show favor to the one you have anointed. His presence brings healing. Remember, I talked about the New Testament use of oil. I said I would reference that in a little bit, and here it is. James chapter 5, verses 14 through 15 say this, Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. There's that purifying effect of the oil again, along with healing. His presence brings protection and strength. Psalm chapter 89, verses 20 through 23 say this, so I have found my servant David. I have anointed him with my holy oil. I will steady him with my hand, with my powerful arm. I will make him strong. His enemies will not defeat him, nor will the wicked overpower him. I will beat down his adversaries before him and destroy those who hate him. Why? Because of the anointing with the holy oil. David had the Holy Spirit. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not my Holy Spirit from me. David knew what it was to be smeared, not just with the physical oil, but with the spiritual reality of the essence and the presence, of the nature of the Holy Spirit. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray that this oil of power, this oil of joy, this oil of favor and honor, this oil of healing, this oil of authority and protection, this oil that causes you to preach the gospel to the lost, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to be positioned in the call of God, to be pure and to walk in holiness, that anointing to intensify on your life. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray in this moment now that you would pour the oil of the Holy Spirit upon that one watching. Lord, not just the shadow, but the substance, the substance. I pray right now that this anointing would flow through my hands, through that camera, Touch that one believing to be anointed by your Spirit. Call them out. There are some of you right now receiving an anointing for teaching, for preaching. There are prophets being anointed. There are evangelists being anointed. There are apostles and pastors being anointed. Receive it now. Father, anoint them for every good work that you've called them to and confirm it by your Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, Amen. A little note there. I do believe that the anointing can be transferred and that mantles can come on people. But remember, it's in God's timing. We don't just go out into ministry because something happened when we were watching a video or listening to a sermon. It's very important that you follow the biblical protocol and the process to receiving ministry. So I want to make that clear so nobody gets the wrong idea. If God's anointed you and you know it and you're called into ministry, God bless you. But I wouldn't dare imply that just because of one prayer for me that suddenly now you're ready to step into public ministry. Be prayerful about that and trust God's process. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you 
and we are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Now listen to me. We're in interesting times right now. We're all living our own interesting realities. And the truth is, things are shifting. Things are moving. Maybe in this season you felt a shifting, a pulling to a different place in the Spirit, and you're looking for a place right now to call your home church. Well, I want to offer to you the opportunity to prayerfully consider Spirit Church as your church. We have over, I think now, 14,000 members from all around the world, people who call Spirit Church their church, and I want you to join the Spirit family. Pray about it, and if God should lead you, davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. We send you a brand new teaching every week, a worship service every week. You can reply to that email. You can contact all of those who are in the Spirit family if you find them online, and sometimes the live streams that we do on Wednesdays, people connect there too. It's one big community of people. So join the Spirit family today. Again, davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. And then also join us on Wednesdays. That's where that interaction is. We go live right here on YouTube or Facebook. And if you want to know when we go live, then just text the word live to the number 797979, and you'll know when we go live. We'll text it right to you. So join the Spirit family today by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Now to your comments. Now, these comments are obviously from this series. They're from last week's teaching, Symbols of the Holy Spirit, and the symbol was fire. So if you haven't seen that one yet, we had a lot of reports, get this now, we had a lot of reports of people experiencing the fire of God right there in their homes as they were watching this content. So if you need a fresh touch of God, if you need that fire to be rekindled in your spirit, then make sure you go and watch Symbols of the Holy Spirit, Fire. And while you're at it, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. And also, if you'd like me to potentially read your comment on next week's edition of Spirit Church, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section right now. Here are the comments, symbols of the Holy Spirit, fire. Mark J. David writes, so extreme. I believe the fire of the Holy Spirit just came upon me. I am free from the bondage of sin in Jesus' name. I've never felt his touch like this in my life. I believe by faith that this teaching was for me. All glory belongs to God. Indeed, all glory belongs to Jesus. And this is the Holy Spirit's channel. This is why people fill the power. This channel is surrendered to Him. He does with it whatever He would like. And so people have heavenly experiences just while watching the content. Nego Kimono writes, Wow, during the prayer I had my eyes closed and I saw an explosion of fire in front of me. It felt so real that I could actually feel the heat. Thank you, Holy Spirit, and thank you, Brother David Diga Hernandez. Well, Nago, there's no need to thank me. All glory belongs to Jesus. The next commenter writes, Well, Pastor David, this message came exactly when I needed it because my fire felt like it was dying. When this message came, I felt the fire of the Holy Spirit and was slain in the Spirit. I feel revived. God bless you. Pastor David, well, God is always on time and the Holy Spirit directs the content. The Holy Spirit's the content director here at the channel. So we constantly get comments from people who say, this message came at the perfect time. Truly, this is the Holy Spirit's channel. Michelle Lauren Sangi writes, Dear David, although this is my first comment, I have been blessed and learned a lot through your ministry. This time, I realized how much I needed the Holy Spirit and how I have longed for the baptism of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Please pray for me. I also enrolled in the Holy Spirit School and have learned so much. Thank you. May God continue to bless you and your ministry. Now, if you're wondering what Michelle is talking about, she's talking about the Holy Spirit School online. Now, the Holy Spirit School is a place where you can be trained in the scriptures on topics like the Holy Spirit, prayer, faith, miracles, ministry, so forth. Now, you go to the holyspiritschool.com, holyspiritschool.com, and you will be able to take a course called An Introduction to the Holy Spirit. It's a nine part. And you watch a video. After you watch a video, you take a test. If you pass the test, you get to move on to the next video. Now, after you've taken all the tests, if you pass the course, you will receive a certificate of completion when, once you finish. Now, this is another awesome note to make. 
When you begin that course, we also send you a free digital download, which is the workbook for that class. So it's an outline with all the points I make, all the scriptures, all the quotes. It's a beautiful layout. It's basically like a, an ebook that we give you that goes along with the material that helps you study. Now, here's the best part. The Holy Spirit School, enrollment, taking the test, getting your certificate, all of it, is 100% free. Now, when I say free, I'm not saying that, oh, you can watch the first 25%, and then after that 25%, you have to pay to see the rest. No, I'm talking 100% free. And no, I don't mean a free version and a paid version. Like the free version is just the video, but the paid version is the testing and the completion certificate and all that. No, I truly mean 100% free. If you don't believe me, go right now. You won't even need a credit card or any payment information. Now, how are we able to do this? We're able to do this because of our monthly supporters. Take a look at these pictures. These pictures come from all over the different nations of the world. These are students who have completed the course, an introduction to the Holy Spirit, and we're adding more courses constantly. Look at their faces. Look at, look at the different nations that they are from. These are precious people of God. Now, I've received emails from many of our students. We have over 11,000 now. I've received emails from them, all of them saying that they're so thankful for the Holy Spirit School. And here's what they constantly tell me. I get emails from Botswana, from Nigeria, from the Philippines, different nations of the world. Here's what they tell me. They say, listen, I want to thank you for making this free because I have so longed in my heart for Bible training, but everyone else is charging for their online schools. And that, dear viewer, is why we support this work. It's why we support the gospel. Now, the Holy Spirit School isn't the only ministry we have. We have the Holy Spirit School. We have the content that we give you on a regular basis, almost a video a day. We have the live streams that we do once a week. And add to that, we have the events that we do all around the world. This ministry is truly making an impact. You can be a part of training the future Christian leaders in the nations of the world. All I'm asking you to do is join our ministry by supporting it financially. Now, maybe you've watched the content for several months now and something in your heart tells you you want to do something, you want to get involved, you want to join the cause. Join our army of supporters as we fight for the soul of a generation. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate right now to give a one-time gift. Or you can go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to become a monthly supporter. Now, if you're going to become a monthly supporter, there are benefits to being a partner. Go check that out. DavidHernandezMinistries.com slash donate for one-time gifts. DavidHernandezMinistries.com slash partner for monthly partnership. Whatever God puts in your heart to do, go and do it today. Help us reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ demonstrated to the power of the Holy Spirit by events and media. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.